So if you're about technical pens, I'm not talking about the fine liner or a pigment liner, but a true old-fashioned technical pen or an isograph pen. Would you like to learn about them? And would you like to see them used for art? I have used many different supplies in all my years of art making. Yeah, that was the granny and me coming out for a visit. But seriously, my name is Robin Mullin and I have made art forever since I was a little thing. Sorry about that. If you want more arty information, please subscribe and hit the bell notification below for more tips, tricks, hacks, demos, and using vintage art supplies. I'm going to share my thoughts and experiences with you. Also more information about the technical pen. So you don't have to purchase and maybe have buyer's regret syndrome and waste your money. I want to make sure you're getting the right supplies for the right job so you can put your money in the correct place for you. I'm all about sharing with you so you can move forward with your creating process. When you see a shiny new supplies, you can say pretty but not for me. You don't want to become an art supplies hoarder. Your desk, studio or area is valuable real estate and it's best not to clutter it up with stuff you'll never use. Let's get cracking. The grandmother of the fine liner. This is the long lost but not forgotten technical pen. This type of tool was used and coveted by draftsmen, architects and designers. You can find a 50-year-old pen in amazing shape in places like eBay and vintage stores. The reason you can find them there is that they were built to last and in general were well taken care of. You can't say the same thing about the modern day fine liner which is a throwaway tool. Initially it costs more but over time if you are a person who draws or writes with pen and ink you'll save money. They are beautiful, reliable, elegant, and so soft on the environment. If you find a brush pen difficult to use, technical pens can help. They can give you a steady, strong line, as you can push against them unlike a bristle brush. They are great for shaky hands. It is refillable and you, have, you can have so many ink choices for fountain pens or technical pens. This type of pen does have a major hang up, and that is you need to treat her right or she will do you wrong. I mean that she has a thing about being clean and using the right type of inks. Personally, I love, love, love using vintage tools. They are my obsession. Many of these tools were built with style, beauty, and craftsmanship. As I said, I purchased my tools on eBay. As I live in South America, there aren't a lot of vintage tools or secondhand tools here. Though they still are used here and can be bought new, I wanted mine to be vintage. I wanted to imagine that my set was often involved in creating some history. So yeah, I know they might have been a set from a high school or something, but I like to dream. Don't ruin my dream. In my dream, they made history. This is my set, the Rotrine Variant Isograph Technical Pen Set, size 01 to size 1.2. I watched and waited like a hawk for the set that was the price I liked and then had them shipped here, easy peasy. I like other sets as well and other makers as well, and there are many, many good ones out there like Cory Knorr and Stadler Mars, just to name a few. This is the basic technical pen setup. I bought it mostly because they're a black set. I love black. My whole wardrobe is black. Enough said. Moving on. No, I'm not a goth artist. I'm too old for that. And no, I'm not depressed. It's just that black matches everything. I love the elegance. Okay, enough said. We're not going down that road. Back to the pens. If you have a comment below about what I'm saying, or would like to add something to help other artists, please comment below. Just remember to be polite and friendly. We're all nice artists here to support each other. Here's the pen. We unscrew the cap and look what's unveiled. The nib, the working end. And now we unscrew the nib from the body and we find the ink reserve barrel. I am, see I'm a good little artist. It is clean and happy and ready to use. Now let's look at this working end. I will draw with this pen in just a sec I want to load it up. See, it's refillable. I gently encourage the flow, shaky, shaky, and test it on a scrap piece of paper. Good to go with a happy little line. The ink flows into and around the cleaning pin to the end of the tube to create pen mark. This pen flows and works best when you hold the pen up to 90 degrees to the paper. But how I use it, how it works best for me, I have it at a slight angle. I do still hold it slightly different than I would a fountain pen. If you like the consistent line, this is truly the pen for you. I like to have several pens at the ready for different line widths. 
time to clean up. You don't have to do this every time, but if you know you're not going to use them for a while, clean them. You don't want ink drying in the pen. For example, when I did ink, the Inktober challenge, I used them every day for a month and they were totally fine without cleaning. Capping them and using the pen regularly prevents ink from drying in the pen. Cleaning can be messy if you're not careful or in a sloppy hurry. I rinse my pen lightly, shaking it gently under the flowing tap. A gently flowing tap, otherwise you'll have water and ink everywhere. Checking to see when the, pen, when the fluid that comes out the end of the tip becomes clear, that is often sufficient. Sometimes you can soak it overnight if you have left the ink in there a long time, more than a couple weeks. Okay, I'm a clean freak about my tools. I also invested in a sonic cleaner because I'm, in, I'm obsessive about being clean and my tools being clean. I'm always amazed at how much further the sonic cleaner will finish the job. Again, a thorough rinsing should do the job, but if you want to go the whole distance, use a sonic cleaner. I use just a tiny little bit of dish soap inside just to give it that extra clean and then rinse it. I don't take the tip pen fully apart, especially with the very fine tips, as the cleaning pin is so delicate it can bend when you try and put them back in place. So that's why I use a sonic cleaner. Again, I found it on eBay and had it brought down. The cleaning, cleaning the technical pen for me is fine. It's not a chore. I like to take care of my tools because my tools express my thoughts and my art. And so I like to honor them and take care of them like I do my art. I use ink for technical pens and fountain pens for drawing. There are also other inks out there that are more permanent and waterproof and can be used in fountain pens, which should also then be good used for technical pens. I suggest going to Goulet and Company for more good information about that. I use uh, Rotarine drawing ink as it is very easy to clean and I can also get it easily down here in South America. Using shellac or India ink is a death sentence for not only your technical pens but your fountain pens. So don't go there. A dip pen, a dip style pen is best for India ink or shellac based inks. I have found that sometimes it leaks a little as when you push the reserve barrel in place it increases pressure inside the pen and if the ink is somewhere inside in the in the tube or in the uh, nib the pressure will push it out so I clean that all up with a paper towel or baby wipe. Sometimes I get messy in the process so to clean me up I use I will also use the baby wipe but more often I will just take my my little behind over to the sink and wash myself as I'm e ecologically friendly most of the time and baby wipes can be a little eco non friendly. When I used the fine liner I found them a little disappointing I have to be honest so these are the reasons why I don't use a modern fine liner. I found that often they were not filled well or had dried out or whatever. I don't like that I can't refill them although I have seen some YouTube videos that did that but they didn't work for me. Maybe it was just me. I don't like throwing away more plastic everywhere which is most of the components of a fine liner. I found that they weren't necessarily reliable especially when I went over situations that made the tip manky and it would clog up the tip and they were unreliable and destroyed the whole brand new pen. The interesting point I found about that was when you use the classical technical pen or the vintage pen and I hit a manky part or something that was not totally dry and it interfered with the tip, I simply cleaned the tip and drew on. Most of the time it just drew over it without any problem because the flow was so good. In conclusion, a technical pen can be a messy thing and needs maintenance. This is a beautiful and reliable tool. It's like a race car more maintenance for higher performance but it's oh so nice to use so i hope i answered your questions i also hope that you invest your, that invest in yourself and your art by purchasing the vintage technical pens or an isograph pen also if you want to visit or become friends you can visit my facebook page or other social platforms where i can where i share all that up to date information about art and other stuff and basically my process if you like this video, please let me know by liking it and commenting if it helped you or if you enjoy using the technical pen. My last little bit of advice is about hoarding your art supplies and not using them. 
It's like having a boat in dry dock and never letting them even hit the water. Use your art supplies and enjoy them. Express yourself in good health and I'll see you in another video. Thank you for watching.